Welcome to Toastmaster Time, the show that has everybody talking. My name is Trish Gray, and I'll be your host for this edition of Toastmaster Time. Today, we have a special treat for you. Our guests are not ordinary Toastmasters. They're our district leadership team. They're going to lay out their plans for the future. Let me explain. Toastmasters are organized into a hierarchy. The individual club members belong to a club with about 15 to 25 members, typically. The clubs are organized into areas with about four to six clubs in each area. The areas then report to a division with about four to six areas in the division, and they all report to the district level. We are District 57, the Redwood Empire. We have about 150 clubs with over 3,500 members. We go from Fremont, California in the south all the way up to the Oregon border. That's a lot of territory. Our district leadership team, we call them the district trio. Our district governor is Jean Cunningham. Our lieutenant governor of education and training is Todd Henry. And our lieutenant governor of marketing is Eddie Cater. They're going to give some speeches to talk about their, themselves a little bit, their goals for the future. We're going to take a short break and then I'll come back and ask them some questions to find out a little bit more about them. Pay, pay attention, they've got some pretty lofty goals. We're going to start with Jean Cunningham, who's our district governor. Jean Cunningham belongs to three Toastmasters clubs. Her home club is Diablo Champagne Breakfast Club. She's also a member of the Toastmasters Leadership Club. She's been a Toastmaster for about seven years, and she's reached the educational level of distinguished Toastmaster. That's pretty high. She's going to tell us what her goals are for this upcoming year. Last year, she was the Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, the year before that, the Lieutenant Governor of Marketing. I think she's pretty well trained for this new position. So let's find out what Jean has in store for us. Here's Jean Cunningham, step it up. Step it up, Jean Cunningham. Fellow Toastmasters, we want you to step it up this year. District 57 has a campaign going. It's called Step It Up. And what do you think it might mean? Well, Step It Up starts with something as simple as stepping up your brand. We want you to use banners that have the current Toastmasters logo and use your badges and your agendas that have the current Toastmaster information. We want you to train your officers twice per year. We want you to excel in your education. That's the communication track. And we want you to prepare leaders for the future. That's using your leadership track and also through volunteering. Now, Obviously, it's important that you involve all the members and engage them at your meetings. You want you to, to encourage them with speeches and evaluations that support their goals. Bring them with you to events and to contests. Team building is another area that you can step it up, and that's a matter of bringing the members of a club. That's a matter of bringing members of a club as a team the areas of the division are a team, and everyone is part of District 57 team. Now, I want you to encourage members by mentoring them at every level. Perhaps go out and coach a low member club, provide fitness to a struggling club, and start a new club. Use your Toastmaster manuals and your successful club and leadership excellence series. Develop your success plans so that you can have a very successful year as a District 57 club. Ladies and gentlemen, step it up. Well, I guess we better do our part here at Toastmaster Time and step it up. We do have some plans, so you're going to have to keep watching our future episodes to see what we come up with. We're now going to hear from Todd Henry, who is our Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training. Todd has been a Toastmaster for about four and a half years. He belongs to EB Praise, Praise Masters, Toastmasters clubs. He's also a distinguished Toastmaster. Ooh, are we getting kind of a sense here of how well experienced these district leaders are? Last year, Todd was the Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, where he recruited new members. But now, as Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, he has to train all of those new people that he recruited. So let's hear what Todd's plans are. Here's Todd Henry with Step Up Education. Step Up Education, Todd Henry. 
Hello, Toastmasters. Why should we care about earning educational awards? When I joined the Toastmaster Club, the members were talking about they wanted to be a DTM. They wanted to earn that distinguished Toastmaster. I thought, what in the world is a DTM? Some of them referred me to the back of my manual. I quickly discovered that it took 45 speeches and numerous leadership projects. I thought, there's no way I can finish 10 speeches, let alone ever get a DTM. My club members and my mentor challenged me. You can do this. We started with the table topic. Ooh. Then we did our normal meeting club roles, where you're speaking. Every opportunity is something to speak and to do better. Then came that dreadful day, the icebreaker. Do you remember your icebreaker? I still remember mine. I talked about having my cherished cat for 18 years and when, when we had to put her to sleep. I thought, I will never have another pet as long as I live. I married my wife and she's a dog person. So yeah, we now have two dogs. But it's the joy of having new pets in our house. I then spoke about Mount St. Helens blowing up being 40 miles to the west that May 18th, 1980 day, and thinking, my God, it's like a nuclear explosion. I talked about wakeboarding. I talked about Oklahoma and Nebraska football. Go Sooners! And then for my 10th speech, I talked about one of my heroes, my grandma. I visited her the week before she passed away in Washington. It was not an easy visit. Then I went to the service the following week. It was something that she has taught me that still inspires me to this day. And yes, she's still one of my heroes. So my challenge is, when we start our first speech until we do the 10th, what I want you to know is what my mentor knew that day. It's impossible if you work the projects to not become a better speaker. Ask any of your club members that have a CC or an advanced award, and they will tell you they're a much better speaker from when they started. We're nothing magical. It's, it's the Toastmaster program. But it doesn't stop there. If you've earned your CC, then we have 15 advanced manuals. And I challenge you, pick two of those advanced manuals, and you continue to use the competent communicator skills that you've learned as the foundation for all your future speeches. And you'll be surprised at how quick you can finish two advanced manuals. We also have leadership track in Toastmasters. Yes, we all wanted to be better speakers, but the communication track is where we practice. The leadership track is where we apply it. And I know if I wouldn't have been a club president, I wouldn't be standing here today. Because that's the role that helped me more than anything else in Toastmasters, except for that icebreaker. When you finish your competent leader, which you should be able to do in the course of a year within your club, I challenge you to be an advanced leader. That's where you start stepping out of your club. You start being an area governor and you're giving back some of what you've learned. But you're also working on being a better speaker and a better leader. I asked you earlier, why should we care about educational awards? I know, like I was then, some of you today think, I don't need to earn that. What's the importance of that? It is the measurement of what you've accomplished. And we know that if you finish your awards, you will be a better speaker. And isn't that why you joined? Commit with me this year to earn an advanced award, earn a competent communicator, Earn a leadership award. I promise you, if you will do this, if you will accept this challenge, you will become a better speaker. And together, we can step it up. Oh my goodness, I guess it's time to finally finish my advanced communicator gold if I want to step it up. Well, that was Todd Henry, our Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training. We're now going to hear from Eddie Cater who is a Lieutenant Governor of Marketing this year. Eddie started out as a plain old Toastmaster, just like we all did, but then he was asked to be a Toastmaster at an area contest, and he was like, 
wow, there's a life to Toastmasters outside of my club. There's work to be done at the district level. He stepped it up by becoming an area governor and then a division governor. And this year, he's gone on to be a part of our district leadership team. Eddie is also a distinguished Toastmaster for his educational award. He is going to be working on building membership in District 57. So let's hear what some of Eddie's plans are. Here's Eddie Cater, Step Up Membership, Step Up Membership, Eddie Cater. There are three kinds of people. Those that make things happen, those who watch things happen, and those who wonder what happened. The same is true with our clubs. Those who are making things happen, they're the ones who are building clubs. They're the ones who are inviting people to create new communities, new clubs, new collection of 20 and 25 people to create a new club. And why? To share the Toastmaster experience with more people. Why do we need to limit ourselves to just 150 club and 3,500 Toastmasters when we can expand and grow Toastmasters to include more clubs and more people so we share the Toastmasters experience? And then there is those who watch things happen. They're the ones who are comfortable in their club and, and okay with the program as it is and okay with membership at just 20 or 25 and they're happy with the way things are going. And they have a good program and they do well. I'm going to challenge you to step it up as far as inviting new members to your club. Ask three questions. Did you have a good time? Do you have any questions? Would you like to join today? And then those who wonder what happened. Now that's a club in trouble. That's a club whose membership is about 12, maybe less, and they really need somebody else to come in and help them grow. At least two people. At least two people to look at the club and watch how things go and coach on membership drive, coach on programming and agenda setting and, and using the education manuals. And it's really stretching the Toastmasters program of where leaders grow, where leaders are made. It takes three kinds of people to really make the world go round, but I have to say to you, only one kind really know how to step it up. We need to step up our Toastmaster skills, our Toastmaster speech, our Toastmaster's leadership ability, and step up our membership to share the Toastmasters program with everyone. We need to really, really step up our game. Oh, thank you, Eddie. I'm going to have to remember those three types of people and use some of those ideas when I'm recruiting members for my clubs. Well, thanks for giving for our trio, Gene Cunningham, Todd Henry, and Eddie Cater, for giving us their ideas of what their plans are for next year. Right now, we're going to take a short break, but we'll be right back with Toastmaster time. Name an effective political leader in history who couldn't speak well. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. There aren't any. Because when it comes to a disease... Freedom like requires this, leadership, no and leadership freedom. requires Parties. oratory. You have to speak to be heard. I have a dream. It's all about personal growth and guts. Never give in. Never, never, never. Welcome back to Toastmaster Time, the show that has everybody talking. I'm here with our district trio, Gene Cunningham, Todd Henry, and Eddie Cater. I'd just like to ask you a few questions, let the members know a little bit more about you, and go into a little bit more detail on some of your goals for the upcoming year. Let's start with Todd. How are you going to step up the District 57 website this year? Thank you, Trish. How can we step up the District 57 website? We're going to run a new contest this year where we'll have a quote or a couple codes on our website once a week and you go on there and you find that code or that quote and you send it in to us and everyone that does will go into a drawing. There's so much information on the District 57 website that we want you to go there and together you can look at that and you can inspire your club members and so many of your questions can be answered directly from that website. 
Oh, interesting, Todd. I'm looking forward to the changes that you're going to be putting on the website. Now I'm going to ask each of you a question. It's going to be the same question, but let's start with Jean. Okay. At the end of your term, and you look back and you say, wow, that was a successful year. What does success look like? At the end of my term, what does success look like? As a district governor, success will be that the district will be distinguished at least. But more importantly, Trish, is that the district members achieve the goals that they want to reach this year because it is all about the members. Great. Okay. Todd, when you look back, how will you define success? A successful year this year would be if every member could achieve an educational award. Right now, one-third of our members have attained educational awards and two-thirds roughly have not. I know that you'll become a better speaker and leader if you can attain your awards, which is what we all joined for. Secondly, I would love it if we had volunteers that said, I would really want to be an area governor next year. And you came to us and said, I'll be an area governor. I'll step up to the plate. Or I'll help with another district role. Or I'll help with the conference. Mm -hmm. We really need you. And I would find that a great deal of success for you as well as the district, which together we would all be much stronger. Interesting. Very good. Now, Eddie, when you look back at the end of your term, how will you define success? I would define success as some place where we look at the number of clubs that we started with and where we've ended the year with by expanding the Toastmasters program, including more and more members. I would also look at the year of success of how did we do as a team? How did we do as a district team? How did I do as a personal Toastmaster? Mm -hmm. How did I do on my personal goals? I'd look at the year of success as to the clubs that I belong to and how they grew as a club. Uh, overall, it's, it, it, it's, it's all 3,500 and more members growing and succeeding. And if I've had a part in that, then that's been a successful year. Great. Well, I would certainly like to help you have a successful year. Now, Jean, what suggestions would you have for individual Toastmasters on how they can step it up? Individual Toastmasters can step it up in very simple ways. If you brought in one member last year, bring in two or better, ten. But do step it up and bring in more members this year. If you had achieved an educational award last year, let's earn two this year. That's step it up. You can also do things like volunteer at the different functions that we have because we always need people to help. And that was more than you did last year. The goal of Step It Up is to do more than you did before. Great. Okay. Now, Todd, what's in it for me? How will Stepping It Up benefit individual Toastmasters? Stepping It Up will benefit individual Toastmasters by becoming better speakers and leaders. You're also going to meet some really cool people that will become your friends for life. Just imagine your home club. We all become like family in our home clubs. I call Toastmasters my second family. When you start getting involved in the rest of the district, you've got 3,300 members that will become like your extended home club. You will grow both professionally, speaking, mentally, physically. You will grow as a person, and more importantly, you can contribute to helping somebody else grow to hit their goals and dreams. Interesting. Well, thank you very much, Todd. Now, Eddie, how do you see the district engaging our individual Toastmasters? With the district engaging with Toastmasters, first of all, it's a great opportunity to connect the district to our members and not be something uh, as aloof or removed. Uh, we're putting on town halls, a chance and opportunity for the district to go into the various different divisions and host these town hall meetings that include some education pieces, a chance and opportunity to do a panel type of uh, conference, and more than that, a chance and opportunity to even show off their speaking talents and show off uh, speech projects that they're working on, all at a town hall setting, complete with food. Oh boy, all right, I'm there, you got food. Now, if you're going to be doing these town halls, you got a lot of area to cover. I hope you have uh, good cars and uh, good <laughs> maintenance on your cars. All right, now, Jean, 
what do you consider to be the top two priorities for your term? Top two priorities for my term are to get the members what they need and to allow them a voice in what they think is important and help them in any way that I can. All right. Now, Todd, I heard you mention some ways that members could step it up by helping out as area governors, division governors. I happen to know that at the district level, there's more than just the three of you. There's a whole host of people. What are some of the opportunities at the district level where Toastmasters can step it up? Other district opportunities are public relations officer, webmaster, conference chairs, chief judge, training conference chair, high performance leadership chair. We can make up positions as they come and go, but there are so many positions. It takes many more than the three of us to Absolutely. run the district. There's 3,300 people. This last time we're at Deckham, we had probably 100 people. And that was some of the older members from last year, the incoming members. But it takes a lot of people to help run this district and help serve the existing members. So yes, there are opportunities for you. Well, great, thank you. Now, Eddie, why do we need new clubs? I like the clubs that we have just fine. The reason we need new clubs is to expand the reach of Toastmasters to ensure that those who are not belonging to any clubs have the opportunity to take advantage of the benefits of Toastmasters. The communication track and the leadership track and how they work hand in hand with each other. How we grow as an individual, uh, how we grow professionally in our workplace, even in our home life, just improving our communication with our family members, our friends. Without the communication education piece that we have in Toastmasters, it's really difficult to say that yes, we've got it, or no, we don't. And the, Toastmasters is a great way to fine tune this great tool called communication. That's great. OK. Now, Jean, mm -hmm. we talked about how individual Toastmasters can step it up. How can Toastmasters clubs step it up? Thank you, Trish. Toastmasters clubs can step it up, and I think the first and foremost thing they need to do is to have their success plan. If you fail to plan, then obviously you plan to fail. You've heard me say that before. Planning your success plan means you look at your group of your club, the team of your club, and you decide who's going to reach each of the DCP goals and how they're going to get there. And then you as a club assist that person. Six of our DCP goals are related to the educational awards. So you need certain numbers of people to achieve all those awards. What you need to do is plan who is going to be in those awards and then help them get there. Thank you. Now, Eddie, how can we improve our meetings? What suggestions do you have to improve our meetings to make them more inviting to guests and new members? One of the greatest ways to improve our meetings is, first of all, begins with our first impressions. How warm, how welcoming are you? How inviting do you make guests feel? How inviting do you make your members feel? Second of all, is your program full? Do you have an agenda? Is everyone speaking from a manual project, a Toastmasters manual project? And are the evaluations fair? Are they balanced? Are they encouraging? Do they promote growth? And then table topics, they have to be fun. They have to encourage the very new guest, the very new member, and the very experienced member. And it has to, if you have a meeting and you're not laughing, something's not happening in your meeting. And I think you need to laugh more. Yep. Well, that's a very good point. You know, in fact, there's an entire club called Laugh Lovers. So excellent. Now, Todd, I asked Jean what her top two priorities were. Todd, what are your top two priorities? My top two priorities are like 1A through 1Z. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, that's more than two. I know. We were just talking about this this evening. Our immediate one for the education and training is to get our area governors finished with training. That's going to happen in July. Then it's to get the rest of the club officers trained. Then it's to help plan the fall conference and the area and division contests and it's to work on TLI for the upcoming winter term. 
the district's assess plan. It takes a lot of effort to make all these things happen. And yes, I have 14 top priorities. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to be busy this next year. So that's our show for this evening. I hope you guys had a great time. I learned a lot, and I think our members have a much better understanding of what your goals are and how we can help you reach them, which will also benefit us as individual Toastmasters. So thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. And that is our show for the, this episode. I'd like to thank all of the people who've helped us out here. We are members of District 57. Our TV sh uh, we tape our show in the San Francisco Bay Area at the Media Center here in Palo Alto. If you would like to watch any of our prior episodes, you can go to our website at toastmastertime.com. We are sponsored by District 57, so we really appreciate having them on the show. And their website is d57tm.org. They have a calendar and find out what's going on at the district level. If you'd like more information about Toastmasters or where to find a club near you, you can go to their website at toastmasters.org. I'd like to thank uh, all of the volunteers here at the Media Center. Without them, we couldn't put on a show. They've been very wonderful to us here at the Media Center in Palo Alto. I'd also like to thank all of our guests, Jean Cunningham, our district governor, Todd Henry, our lieutenant governor of education and training, and uh, Eddie Keeter, our lieutenant governor of marketing. I'm Trish Bray, and keep on talking.